Hello, in this Dart programming video, I am going to show you concurrency. So concurrency essentially allows you to execute instructions, you know, in a parallel fashion. So if you want to do a lot of tasks and you don't want to, you know, wait for your application for, you don't want your application to wait for one task to finish, then execute the next task and then execute the next task, which is the normal way it would do it if you code it normally. If you, you know, let's say all those tasks are very important, it doesn't really matter which one, you know, finishes first, then you can use something called concurrency. And to implement this, pretty simple. So what you want to do is use an input line. You might also notice I'm not on my regular Dart Lang website, the online editor, simply because I can't actually import this library on the online editor. But if you use you know proper ID like IntelliJ or I'm using here, you should be all good to go. And if I just put dot and colon isolate, need a semicolon at the end. And now what I'm going to do is create a method. And I'm going to call it func short for function. I'm going to put str not str string str. So I'm going to pass in a string. And I'm just going to print it out and just print it out directly. What, what you do in here is up to you because this is the, you know, the code, the function that will just be triggered in a parallel fashion. And what we're going to do is to run this function in a parallel fashion, you put isolate dot spawn. Now you put your entry point, which is the name of the function method is this what's going to go into this parameter here so i'm just going to put one and i'm going to put two three actually you know what let's do a few more let's do four five and six and now afterwards if we do some print lines if we say normal one so this is just a normal print line this is not running parallel so this one will never be triggered before this one and like this one will never be triggered before these two for example but this one could theoretically be triggered before this one and hopefully you should see it because you know it, it depends on how the CPU ends up executing it. So if we run it, we get one, two, three, four, five, six. As you can see, even though this code is, you know, afterwards, this little, you know, running in parallel is a little slower just to initially, you know, initiate the code, trigger the code. So therefore, this will probably get executed before this. But as you can see, this isn't in the same order. Order. We did one, two, three, four, five, six. Is printed out at 53162. And let's see what happens if we try and, you know, re, you know, rerun it. So if I try and rerun it, and as you can see, the order is now different again. So that's just, you know, one thing to bear in mind because it's running parallel, you may not have the exact order. And yeah, that's pretty much what you would want necessarily. That's what you would want. You would want it to run you know, as quick as possible. So that's it for concurrency using the isolate class and library. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.